That's what I turn the camera on. An absolute unit is washed out over here. Rain last night, I can tell you. Good morning. <laughs> it's already turning out to a lovely, uh, clear day. The weather forecast just says it's uh, supposed to be doing that, but as we all know, the weather forecast is not always 100% the truth. But here I am, I am absolutely so lucky to be here. I've um, been invited by uh, a really top guy called Paul, who you probably well know on YouTube, um, to come and fish home fen for the week. Um, I got here yesterday. Um, I got here yesterday morning, left my house at six, um, been sort of proper worried all week about how's the draw going to turn out and and everything else and but obviously that's completely and utterly out of my control but got here met the lads really really nice bunch of guys they're here had a walk around well sorry let's go back so when I turned up I um, parked behind the cars and there was one part of the swim that I pulled up to which is just to my left here on straight away and uh, I walked straight down to the water's edge and I see free, free fish show straight away within about five or ten minutes. And they're one end of the lake, so I was thinking, oh, everyone else has seen that as well. But at the end of the day, let's be honest, if the fish are all in one end of the lake and one person goes up there, they're going to be looking for spots, so the fish are going to move out, but you know, not necessarily they're going to stay out, they could come back, but then they could go somewhere else. So it's <clears throat> it's one of those so we had a walk around um, there was a guy there was a, a bunch of guys here that have been here for three days but from what I understand there's only been one fish come out and that was only five pound um, but if that's the truth or not I don't know but that's what we got reported back but we had a walk around and uh, this lake I've seen it on the videos I've seen it through Google Maps um, it is nothing like those videos the place is immense it is carptopia without a doubt the only unfortunate thing with the long hot summer like all lakes up and down the country that is uh, the water levels are are down at the moment um, but i'm sure they they will come back up again in due course for the rest of the year but so just over in front of me there is uh, the dugout party point um and then to the left of that, if you're standing in there, is a wasted time where Paul was fishing. And Monday morning, going to report that Paul's already had a fish. I'm not going to talk much more about it because um, he is filming over there as we speak. And I'm watching him film in the water in his waders, getting the fish out. Um, just to the left of him is four strong winds, but that's been closed because of the water level. So no one is allowed to fish that. And rightfully so, to be, to be honest, there's... It's quite shallow around there and there's a lot of bars um, and where you fish there's a upper chance of getting cut off while you're lying going on one of the bars. But walking around the back to the left of four strong winds and then coming round into the beach, uh, the pump hole, um, the reeds is just to my right and the lookout. The, um, the guy in the lookout has had one last night but from what I guess from his chatter last night talking quite loudly um, he had a bit of a mare with it I think it's gone across these lines but the fish was quite small so um, I've heard him shout out all of that for that so uh, he didn't even get the fish out I was watching on, on the binoculars and he didn't even get the fish out he just uh, up the net and then turned it back out again so I'm in a swim called Harry's so I was talking about the draw um, it was quite it was quite interesting actually um, now I've had some really good advice from some people that I've been talking to this week um, with um, Wayne and Perry and I really appreciate that lads, thank you very much. 
but the draw is the control. Um, people that know this lake, I've never fished here before, but the people that know this lake already know where they're gonna wanna go. And the draw was potentially no different. But the one thing that did surprise me is the people that were standing next to me when I turned up and see the fish show in front of Harry's, um, I didn't know at the time that they weren't gonna pick the swim. But anyway, so the draw, there was one interesting thing that did happen. There was a guy, um, when they'd done number five, which was Aaron, um, he went into the dugout. No, sorry, Aaron was free. He went into the dugout. Paul Cho uh, had number four and he went into wasted time. And um, Martin Yona said, who's got six? And one guy said, that's me. And then he started talking about Harry's and I was just like, oh no, don't pick Harry's, don't pick Harry's. Um, and then he uh, started talking about the pump hole. Um, the pump hole now has got two swims in it, but ideally, if there's a group of lads on, it's the same sort of scenario as what it is down at Elphick's West End when I go down there. The first swim on West End, I always close off and the second swim is open because you've got control of that bay. There's no point having two people there. And the same was over there. Um, so the conversation was with the guys that if, if one person picks pump hole, there's no one gonna go in next to him. The other swim's closed off, either which one he, he wants to go in. But he said he wanted to go in there and then when he handed his number back, to Martin, he went, oh no mate, you've got number nine, you ain't got number six. Um, and then the guy who actually had number six stepped forward and chose the pump hole. So he sort of like, um, he missed his chance of going in the pump hole. So you can make up your own minds about that one, but at the end of the day, it's the draw. Um, I don't feel all these guys know each other, so it is a bit dog eat dog. And then lucky enough, it, I was number seven um, and I chose Harry's. Um, I've had a lot of advice from Perry about this and also I spoke to Wayne yesterday and told him and he gave me um, some good advice about where to have a look. I've had the bait boat out today, um, yesterday sorry, and had a really good look round. Um, I've got two rods um, out in front of me, one at 19 wraps, one at 21. On um, from what I can see is a really nice flat, decent depth area. And then my left hand rod, um, I've got it right in the corner um, in a little like little divot here but it's eight foot deep around there and um, I've been told Wayne that his friend um, had a bait in there and caught 250s in an afternoon wow but yeah I'm in there but today the weather is a lot calmer yesterday I didn't do any filming yesterday I wanted to get settled in first time I've been here um, the excitement was through the roof getting everything set up getting the feel of the place I'm not even necessarily still haven't got the feel of it but getting the feel of it from yesterday um, is what I wanted to do nothing happened last night apart from two fish have come out from what I know right now so today the weather is a lot calmer because the winds yesterday so the wind was blowing to my right in this little bay to my right here. I did find an absolutely awesome spot down there yesterday, which, um, because of the winds change, I'm gonna have to put some bait down there today and uh, put a rod down there at least. So I'm gonna investigate that, but <clears throat> at the moment it's, uh, it's still quite early. So I'm gonna let potentially bite time pass and then about midday I will be uh, have another investigation around and then go from there because this place and the type of venue it is I don't know what bait was put in and how much bait was put in from the last guys that were here or even the guys before that so um, my approach would always be me and Paul were talking before we walked away to our swims um, and Paul said don't put too much bait out first off and that was my philosophy anyway um, so I was always going to do that but I'm not sure that anyone in the last group when I was walking around was fishing in this swim. I don't think they were, which is quite decent. And there's no one to my right, no one to my left. Like I said, we've got this bay here, which is lovely. I will be talking to the guy in the reeds today. Um, he had his bait boat, which with any lake, it looks really deceiving. At first I thought, oh my God, he's on top of one of my rods, but actually he was a lot further out. And then I was looking on my phone just out of interest to see what he found because I couldn't see what he found like spots wise just for memory bank in case I'm blessed to come back 
so you never know. But um, yeah, I don't know if he thought I had the ump with him because um, he was close to me. I didn't have the ump. I was just actually looking to see where you were going. But right over to the right here, there is a lovely, absolute flat spot, about 10 foot. And it's right in the corner. And the fish here, from what I've been told again, seem to love little quiet bays. So, yeah. I'm going to finish my tea. And... Uh, Day two starts the proper the proper day for having a, a sort out and having a look around and then we'll go from there. Thank you. 
Morning. Literally just then I just see a fish bosh out. Three quarters of its body just comes straight out of the water as I was looking at it. Can only be a good sign. Good morning again. We are on Tuesday morning. Um, I've been here since Sunday. I'm a little bit um, goggly eyed because I woke up 20 minutes ago. And at the moment, from my end, there's nothing to report. Andy uh, in the dugout has had a 53 pound mirror. What a fish that was. I see, um, I was doing some bits and bobs in the bivvy making, um, getting rigs sorted out. And then I, um, I come out and I looked over there and he was in the water with it. Um, I couldn't see the fish because he had his back to me. But, um, and at first I didn't even know it was Andy that had it. And then uh, I see him put the fish back, still couldn't quite see the fish. And I just see him put his hands up in the air. And uh, I WhatsApped him about 10 minutes later and he, uh, he sent me a picture of the fish. What an unbelievable chunk that is. So over the moon for him. On every video that I do, I seems to, uh, I am over the moon for people that catch that I'm with. Um, but I'd like to say sort of like quite early on that I'm over the moon that I've had one, but as of yet, it hasn't happened. So, um, but I've still got loads of time. So, this end of the lake last night, there were, there was a fair bit of movement down here. I spoke to Paul, who's in Wasted Time. Um, and he said he hasn't seen anything down his end yesterday um, but he done exactly the same as what I did on the first night I fell asleep at about 7 o'clock so I was knackered on, um, on Saturday night I had a surprise I'd uh, organised a surprise party for my dad so obviously there was that sorting out all that all Saturday and um up until quite late Saturday night and then Sunday um, obviously Saturday night I was excited about coming here and then Sunday I got up early and left to come here so I was absolutely shattered so it, it must have been the same for him because I know he was working the night before on a Saturday night so it was exactly the same for him so he fell asleep at 7 last night and he didn't see anything and he woke up um, quite late um, and then he said to me he thinks a lot of the fish are all down this end which I'd have to agree with him there was a lot of movement down here. Only seeing subtle shows though last night, not like proper boshing out like that one just was. But there seemed to be a lot more activity down here. But what I need to sort out is I'm I had a lot of investigation yesterday on my spots and um two rods that I've got out in front of me now um, I had them on different spots to what they are now plainly because when I reeled them in um, and tried to get them back out there I couldn't find them so there's a lot of um, there's some there's some rolling weed going around it's that time of the year where it's dying off anyway so there's some there's some weed dying off and rolling and moving around um, it's quite evident from the edges anyway so um but so on Google Maps, there's uh, in front of me there's three bars, and the one on the right, there's two on the right here to me, 
and they're quite next to each other and in the middle there's a gully um, and I sent my boat out found what looked like a flat nice solid um, area so I got my boat to come back in and I took my rig off my, my rod and just put my lead out there because with my marker rod it's a bit of a broom handle um, so sometimes what I like doing is if I can is uh, taking the rig off my actual rod that I'm fishing with um, and having a feel with that so I sent my lead out with the boat dropped it had a feel back it was absolutely lovely um, it's silty with a little bit of gravel in there and it's in a proper gully so I'd say it's not that big it's probably only about a metre um, but from speaking to people um, they're saying that the fish use that as a bit of a roadway so I can only go by the information, that information so that's where I've got my right hand rod my uh, middle rod is further out towards the beach at about 19 wraps on another area that I found that is absolutely lovely as well and yesterday other than the first night I went um, I put a lot more bait out when I say a lot more not a massive amount but a lot more bait out so I'm fishing with um, I've got S7 DNA S7 crumb um, with some chops but I'm, I'm using 12 millers so I'm using quite a lot of small baits but the crumb around the 12 millers is just the it's just a nuts but my only regret about this trip is I didn't get some 8 millers because I've got some 8 mils for um, for Barry my pal Barry for him and when they uh, got uh, when I went and collected them the other day um, they just looked amazing so I wish I got some of them but next trip so uh, and on my right hand rod I've got um, exactly the same again but the bug um, and on my left hand rod over there I've got some uh, SLK I'm mixing it up a little bit I've got all the baits with me I love every single one of the baits um, the only one I haven't really used in depth yet is the switch but I, I smelt it not that long ago for the first time um, and it just smells wicked and I think the switch is a bit of a bait that's forgotten about because you know I haven't used it but I'm, I'm going to be using it so yeah I have got um, a little bit of particle and I've got some tiger nuts as well so we will um, we will see what happens today is going to be another one of those thinking days but the problem is with this sort of scenario these fish do move around on this lake from what I'm told so it's always that scenario do I move do I move the spots again because you could have fish coming on you and the bait's been there for a couple of days so you know I've got loads of time left so I think I'm going to stick with that at least for another at least till I'll say at least until the end of Wednesday and have a think. Um, I'm not ruling out a move either. Um, there's uh, one end of the lake down there that no one's on. Sorry, can't let my tea go cold. Um, there's an end of the lake down there that no one, nobody is on right to my left and it's a proper sort of like um, a bay, a dead end bay. <laughs> So I'm not ruling that out at all. I like the idea that no one has been down there because at the end of the day fish will <coughs> respond to pressure. Um, and in one of Paul's videos um, that he done, he was fishing a swim, forgive me Paul, can't remember what swim he was fishing. I think he might have been on I think he might have been on the dugout or he might have been on the beach. I think it was and then there was a couple of days left and he moved and he went down to that area of the lake and he had three fish so you know it's not I'm not over overlooking that possibility but I'm sitting here this lake is beautiful it is I don't there's not many lakes that I've fished where this is absolute carptopia um it's like the only shame and unfortunately like I said earlier on is is the um, the water levels are down but it just still looks amazing the the islands over there with the water levels up as what they they normally should be oh my god this place is just and then you sit back and then you think about what 
is in front of you. You know, I've got my rigs in a water where there's a mid 70 in England. You know, 10 60s, nearly 50 50s, 80 fish over 40 pound apparently, and I'm in England. You know, the one thing that really, really annoys me is you hear people saying wrong uns, wrong uns, wrong uns. Really? How are they wrong uns? Because every lake that everyone fishes in the country now, or most lakes, you know, they're categorizing fish that are wrong uns. Let's remind ourselves of something. In the very, very beginning, carp are not indigenous to England and they never have been. It was the monks that brought them over in the 15th century. So, is the strain a wrong one? Then, at the end of the day, everyone has got their own opinion and they can they can keep their own opinion. I've got nothing to say about that. It just, it, I can't, I don't understand anyone that wouldn't want to come here and fish for these fish. They are carp, regardless of where they come from, what size they got put in the lake, and so on and so on. It just, it just bemuses me a little bit. If I'm if I'm this week, if I'm lucky enough to have a PB out of here, and even an overall PB, I'm going to be walking around being one happy carb geezer. So um, it is what it is. But oh, there was a fish in front of me. Stand by. I think that was a fish. Very, very, very close in as well. Yeah. Oh, that was extremely close in. No, it was a tough day, dummy. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm more than happy to come here and fish for these fish. More than happy, beyond happy to come here and fish for these fish. Um, I very, very hope, very much hope that I'm going to be invited back for next year. Um, because I'd love to come back here and I'm only two days in and I've blanked so far. But I want to thank um, Paul, where his videos, I will put a link um, in the bio with him. He's, um, he is the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi of this lake. Um, as well as Wayne Munsford, I've spoken to Wayne. Um, Perry Alabaster, I've spoken to as well. Um, and uh, also Mark, who's got a couple of videos up, a few videos up. Um, from the PCF group I think it is, forgive me, I'll double check that but I will be putting a link up for his videos as well, very nice guy, he was messaging me yesterday gave me a lot of nice information as well, so I'm appreciative of all you guys for uh, helping me out on this trip um, and hopefully it will come off but it's about half past seven now the lake is very quiet and uh, along with um, normal routine of this lake, from what I've been told, the fish are uh, showing a couple of times. So let's hope these are... Uh, I'm blessed today with a fish from here. But yeah, I'm enjoying myself, but I am missing my family a little bit. My mate just grabbing a bit of weed and um, touching my line and if I could say that my backside just fell out then because I was on camera I uh, wouldn't be too far off. Morning. Good morning buddy, how are you doing? I'm good thanks mate, good thanks. What do you know? I don't know what to think with this lake, buddy. I don't because it's my first time here. I've gone by your information. I've gone by a couple of other people's information, but I mean, I'll be honest with you. Up until last night, I didn't know what to feel because I'm really well. Say last night up until 
about four o'clock I didn't know what to feel and then there was loads of movement down here um, but there were subtle shows there was one show like a proper three quarters of the body out fish that I just got the end of as I looked at it and then um, quiet night not a bleep but this morning down here um, the, it's gone a bit mad I've seen three really 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 good shows like massive dolphin type shows and that one then just then um, I got them from my rod chestnut mirror absolute megalodon has fully come out of the water um, so I don't know I feel like a little bit on 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 edge at the minute like it won't yeah. surprise me if that goes off it's a madness when it gets to like that and that's what this place does to you it's like hours and hours of like complete nothing and then all of a sudden this just seems to change and you know then things start to happen but i mean especially as far as i can see it i've looked at the weather uh, and if you look back to the first night we was on, we had that massive pressure drop and we had a bit of rain come in and the fish responded to that. And then yesterday, all the, all the pressure just crept up all day. I was really surprised that he had one in the dugout yesterday and it was good fish. And then yeah. the moment we've got high pressure again. And then Thursday night, that's the night, mate. There's a low pressure coming in Thursday night into Friday morning. And that's going to be the one. Well... I hope it's the one for me, mate, or if not before, because uh, I've just been having a conversation to myself about half hour ago. Um, no, I weren't. I was um, I was doing a bit of film, and um, I was thinking that if nothing happens by Thursday, I quite fancy that bay. Um, I don't know what film it was of yours. I think you was in the beach, and then you moved right over to my left in that bay over there, and you had two, three fish. Um, just party single. Was it party single? Yes, you moved yeah. in there, didn't you? And then you had a couple of fish. Um, because that bay's pretty much been left on its own for the duration that we've been here. But also... That's where, that's East Bay. <coughs> uh, I think Chris is in East Bay. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's it because there's a peg right, right round. Oh, he's in there? Uh, yeah, he's in there. Oh. Well, I, like, when I come out in the drawer, I was torn between here and there. I didn't really fancy to open water spots because it's long range and it's awkward I'd rather fish to my strengths if you know what I mean yeah but it's like now I'm sort of thinking to myself I wish I had have gone there but the thing that put me off is Ian had already pulled out party point and he wanted to fish that inside bar now in that spot there that's all about that inside bar right okay I did see a fish absolutely bosh on that bar last night you see the other thing is you can come from the other side and fish sunset and fish up to it. You can't, you can't really say all that. Just talking to you on the phone, there's just been one that's just showed. Has it? Yeah. Over They're there. not showing up this end of the lake. It's madness. But yeah, there's been a couple of really decent shows up here. The wind's trickling in here now. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether to feel confident or not. I've seen two fish where I feel confident about that, but hey, it, 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 it's bite time now anyway. Especially for them open water swims, they tend to do more bites. Like blown away, Harry's party point. They tend to do more bites either through the night or up until twelve o'clock. It's like that mid morning period seems to be better where you are. I don't okay. know why. Okay, I'm not a million miles out either, so I've got. Do you know the two um, very distinctive bars to my to my right? Um, yeah. I've found a really lovely, clear, smooth, sort of like little bit of a gravelly spot in between those two bars at nine foot of water, and I've got a bait in there. Um, my middle rod is out just to the left of the beach um, at 21 wraps on a lovely little spot. Um, and then my left hand rod is right tucked in this little divot to my left in nine yeah. foot of water in there um so yeah i've got a bit of every option going but i'm not further further out i mean perry i spoke to perry yesterday perry alabasta and he was like straight towards the beach 24 rats but i can't because the guy in lookouts there so um 
Yeah. See, it's always hard, especially when you've got bells. When when it always looks deceiving when you've got bells. You know, when people are casting, don't look as bad on you. Nah. That's why he doesn't allow bells normally. He's like down to the party. Oh right, okay, I'll get you. Yeah, because it just causes too much argument. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, um, I've got a boat, I've been using it, but I'm not one that takes the piss. I'd always sort of like try and wave at someone and ask them, is that's all right, that's all right, but... Um, I mean, like, the main spots out from, like, Party Point is, like, 33 wraps to the furthest bar. And it, it just looks like he's taking all the water when he puts a boat out there, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've seen it before and I'm thinking, surely that's lookout's water, uh, you know, and I've seen it vice versa. But whoever's in the beaches always ends up having an argument with both. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Because Perry said to me yesterday, he said that 24 yards, that 24 wrap spot, Pete, that's your water, that's not Lookout's water. And I'm like, oh, oh, I don't it's, know. But it's different. It was obviously, this, that was the rule when he was here. Don't necessarily mean it's the rule. You know what I mean? So... Um, hey, I'd, have, I'd have easily said that's your water. Do you know what I mean? Well, I might today um, wrap up 24 wraps, send me boat out there and have a look to see where I am. If he starts shouting and hollering, then I know that I'm close to his rods and then I'll just come back. Um, it, it honestly it can just look at even with the boat, you know. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. But yesterday I was I was doing the spots on the boat and then I was um, clipping up, dropping my lead out of the boat, having a feel, clipping up, and then I was casting around instead of just kept on sending me boat out. Um, I prefer to do that. And, um, yeah, that middle rod is on a lovely spot out there that seems to be quite big, but... We can only see what happens, mate, and go from there. And uh, it looks banging today, doesn't it? Let's be honest. But it does. But it's high pressure today. It's a zig day today. Oh, okay. I might try some zigs. I didn't know if zigs were allowed on here or not. Yeah, you're allowed zigs. Zigs work well on here. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's, what, that's why I tend to fish the shallower water rather than deeper water because I'm always sat there thinking I should have zigs on, I should have zigs on, it plays with my mind a lot and I'm not the best big zig fisherman, I'll be totally honest, hate them, absolutely hate them, I'd rather fish <laughs> on bait. <laughs> yeah, same. So it's, it's one of them, but when you're in them open waters, which it's hard to ignore them. Yeah. It, even when I was here last, I, I, I ended up putting one zig on. You know, just because I couldn't ignore what, what I was seeing. I just wish I was seeing summits here now to sort of keep me going a bit, you know. I've had one liner through the night, but, you know, that could be anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Well, um, something I forgot to tell you. Um, on my middle rod yesterday, uh, the bobbin pulled right up to the top. I had, um, the spool went about seven or eight ticks. Um, I picked the rod up, leant into it, felt something. Um, and about 15 seconds later, it was absolutely solid. And I just kept the pressure on, didn't move my rod, literally. It was like um, the tension was just there. I didn't pull the rod anymore, but the rod was bent, so to speak. So, And then it just come free. So I don't know if that was a... I'd say that that was a savage line. And what it's done yeah. is move the lead into the weed. So as you've pulled up, you've got resistance straight away. That happens on here. Because yeah. they're out in front of you, there's a lot of weed out in front of you. Yeah, I've that seen book, it. The lookout, you know, is even worse. I'd say that's probably the worst spot on the lake for the week. It's very hard to find <clears> the <throat> spots in that, in that swim because it's so deep as well. Yeah, well, there was a massive kelp bed in front of me, about 15, 16 wraps, um, <laughs> where I've cast my lead in before uh, yesterday, and I was literally trying to get it out, and it looked like I might have had a a tarpin on or something it was like my rod was absolutely bent treble and i was just keeping the pressure on and then i obviously broke away from it so there's a massive bed of that crap out there and i was bringing half of it in with me yeah yeah but the fish spend a lot of time in that kelp it's like i've got i'm fishing towards a kelp bed where i'm fishing at the minute and honestly my right hand rod that's the one i'm most confident in mm. it's the proper proper clear spot i've caught fish off of it before and fishing from the dugout and i had to fish through it from the dugout and pull the fish back through it 
but they do spend a lot of time in there. Them big ones, they, they, they just like, they lurk in there and just stay there, do you know what I mean? When they're not feeding. Yeah. Yeah. So a clear spot is the one then, maybe if you've got a little clear spot and you can drop one straight in there, that might be the, uh, the golden yeah. ticket there. Yeah, if you can find a spot in that kelp, it, it's, it's a flyer. All right, pal. Thank you very much. All I right. will. Uh, I'm going to have. Is there? There's a shower block here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, it's where you know where the shed is, where the freezers are now. No. Well, basically, as you're coming through the gate, there's two little buildings there. It's the first door. Oh, okay. Uh, one closer to the gate, basically, and that's a shower block. Okay. I'm going to go down the shop. I think maybe later on this afternoon. So I'll, I'll, I'll have a walk around anyway, and I'll come see you in a bit anyway. All right, no right, pal. Cheers, Paul. Right, no worries, mate. Thanks, bud. That was Paul in wasted time. Um, yeah, you could tell by his voice. Don't know whether. Obviously, I'm in a better position at the moment because I've seen three fish bosh out in front of me. So, um, but over there is it's it's very quiet from where he is. And there's, I mean, the, the wind's just died down literally within the last sort of like minute or so. And um, it's flat calm, but the wind seems to be pushing up my end. But he's over there and he hasn't seen anything, not had anything. But he's had a fish on the first night. So it's uh, it's one of them. It's, it, these fish, wherever they are, it's, you need to find them. And, but that's the issue with um, this sort of scenario. When we're on on a lake exclusive we pick our swim and not necessarily depending on what lake you're fishing is there um, a great opportunity to move but on here there's 10 of us on here and there's 18 swims so you know there's a there is a bit of an option but then it's that Russian roulette sort of type scenario where I've been here for two nights now I've got bait in the areas if I move and the fish move in <laughs> It's an absolute mind game. It's a beyond mind game. Which I'm gonna to have to try and get my head round. And then my phone rings. So after that conversation with Paul, I decided to make sure everything was out, ready for that potential bite. Of course I put the kettle on, but I did not expect what was just about to happen. It took me by surprise. today I was over the moon with what he told me and do you know what Paul I've got to thank you for this one because uh, if it weren't for you this wouldn't have happened I don't think but what an absolute lovely fish this <sighs> over the moon absolutely over the moon Thank you very much. Oh. That was stuck in the mud. 
after that fish, got the rods back out on the spot and I just relaxed for the rest of the afternoon, taking in what had just happened. It was absolutely over the moon. The afternoon soon went really, really fast and before we knew it, the moon was high up in the sky and I'm just getting settled for the rest of the night. Saturday morning, very quiet night. <coughs> Again, um, so far this week since I've been here, um, Paul has been the only person that's caught what I would say in the night time at one o'clock in the morning. No one else has caught from what I know. Um, all the action that's happened seems to have been the earlier part of the morning, say from um, 9 to about 11.30 and then, um, and then nothing and it seems to start again and kick off from about 2 o'clock up until the late evening. Um, I don't know if this is just my week here, but very strange, isn't it? I mean, I don't, I'm not experiencing that anywhere else I'm going. But, but um, Paul said exactly the same thing that it was um, those times as well with the bites, and not so many at night, but. <clears throat> So it's my last day, last night. Got to be off in the van, driving out by half nine tomorrow. Um, so last night I put um, a lot more bait out. Um, all crumb, bug and a seven. And I've also got some tiger nuts as well, so I crushed some tiger nuts up and put that up. And fishing with um, two 10 mil pop ups, well, three 10 mil pop ups because I've got three rods out. But today again, I'm happy with my spots, I'm more than happy, they're very, very clear spots. And they are between 21 and 25 and a half wraps out front of me on, on lovely lovely spots all ranging from seven foot to eleven foot so but today again is gonna be a little bit more in depth more than what yesterday was so um, but I'm gonna reel in at about half 10 11 go for a shower and then come back and get ready for the last night repeat but hopefully this time definitely it'll be I'll have uh, one of these dream dream fish in my net I've already had one I've already had a nice, lovely lovely fish so but I'm greedy old so we'll see what happens That is it, the trip is over. Um, Sunday morning, mixed emotions about the uh, my first time on here. Um, if someone said to me in the beginning part of the week that I would have um, a bruiser of a 40 pound mirror, then I definitely would have snapped their arm off. Um, so in that respect, I'm really, really happy. Um, going into last night, I don't know if I was confident or not, you know. Um, 
way that the weather was and everything else was but um, within very good keeping of all of the films that I've done so far with catching on the last night um, it still uh, stayed true so I had a, I had a take at about half ten uh, and to my amazement I had the most amazing common massive shoulders um, for the fish absolutely pristine um, the only issue is it was three quarters of a pound so um, that's definitely one for the future and very very unexpected um, and about an hour after that I had another tench so um, I could count on that little common as a take from a carp on my last night and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that but um, this has been an amazing week for me I thoroughly enjoyed it I've learned a hell of a lot speaking to the guys that I've been speaking to um, I've met some really lovely guys, um, Andy, he had, a, he had two fish this week, one of them being a 53, which is amazing, um, Ian, next door to him in Party Point, he had a, um, a mid-40 mirror as well, um, I think three or two days ago, um, not, uh, Neil, over the back, in his first two days, he had 12 fish over in Jake's, but unfortunately combined weight of 25 pounds, so they obviously must be all the mates of the one that I had last night and then he moved into a sunken tree. I don't know how he's done yet, um, but there's been about 10 fish come out, I think this week, um, which in hindsight, for the time of year, I don't know if that's good or bad, I don't know. I don't know enough about the lake, but there has been two 50s out and five 40s, four 40s, I think it was. But it's uh, it's been a wonderful week for the people that have caught those fish, uh, including me, so I'm really happy, but I want to thank the, um, everyone that I've been, been bombarding for the last four weeks um, with uh, the information that they gave me. Wayne Munsford, thank you very much for the info you gave me. Perry Alabaster as well, really helped me. He's fished um, this swim a lot, Harry's, he's fished it a lot. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank Paul for his invite. Paul is a really, really lovely guy. He's got a lot of films on YouTube, go and check him out. And Paul, thank you very much for the invite. I've loved every second of it. But now it's time to pull off. Uh, and as with always, um, I can't wait to see my wife and kids and I want to get home. So until next time. Oh, I'm banging cup of tea that I do so to myself. How can anyone not like my tea? I love my tea. The, what my wife says, I cannot make a cup of tea at all. Can't make coffee either. Well, guess what? I don't like coffee. How can anyone be good at something they don't like doing? You know what I mean? Is anyone else like that? Are you really good at something you don't like? How's that make any sense? But I love and miss my wife and my kids badly. Two more nights, bosh. I oh, shit myself down, I had the microphone, rabbit it on for like 25 minutes, 19 minutes, I didn't have the poxy microphone. filming fucking hallelujah oh. microphone's on <laughs>